Welcome to The Funniest Thing. Yes. Where each week we share stories about how stepping out boldly always leads to better than expected outcomes. Thank heavens it does. I'm Daryl. I'm Ed. And we are broadcasting live from Chobo Studios in... Beautiful downtown Van Nuys. That's right. <laughs> Home of the bearded cherub, Indy Fawcett. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, <laughs> and thank you to Barbara Weatherman for my Starbucks car. Yeah, baby. <laughs> All right. Um, we got a quick ponder reading to kick this thing off, don't we? Oh, that's right. I, that's kicking off the show. Yeah, yeah. This show is actually called The Universe is Playing Your Song, Sing Along with Dakota Ledford, who's going to join us during the second segment. She is amazing, has a brand new hairstyle to share with you, <laughs> and a lot of joy. So we're happy that she's here in the studio. So uh, Daryl just found this one in a book. Yeah, I use, uh, if you um, write to Catherine Ponder, I'm sure you could find her on the... Uh, Interwebs. Yes. Um, she'll send you these great pamphlets in the mail. And this one, I don't remember She's great when affirmations I, for prosperity. Yeah, I don't remember when I received this, but... Let's hear it. I use them as bookmarks in my night, you know, in my books, and I just pulled this one book out. I started reading, and this fell out of it, and it's so good. Mm -hmm. And it says um, one of the things on it, it's the, called the Prosperous Truth, is the name of the pamphlet. It's only right. one page, and it says uh, God is the source of your supply. And I'm just going to read an excerpt here. This is the little-known secret about prosperity that the whole world is seeking to know today. Most people still think that someone, some condition, some job, some investment controls their prosperity. Prosperity works through people and conditions that act as channels, but God is the source of all supply. Knowing this, we do not panic if people or conditions seem to let us down financially. We know to turn to God as the source, who then guides us to new channels of supply through ideas, people, opportunities, which present themselves. And here's an affirmation. I do not depend upon persons or conditions for my prosperity. God is the source of my supply, and God provides his own amazing channels of prosperity to me now. And it wraps it up with this. Moses affirmed, affirmed this, to the Hebrews, thou shalt remember the Lord of thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. The psalmist affirmed it for himself. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yeah, that was a big Reverend Ike favorite thing, that, that psalmist part. The thing is, if that sounds like, ah, oh, what does that crap mean? Dude, the song, this show is called The Universe is Playing Your Song, Sing Along. Like, cause we all have to work into this realization that like, yeah, it's great to say God, it's great to say, but it has to mean something to you. And a lot of people don't realize, like a lot, oftentimes I don't realize that this whole thing is geared towards singing a song, my song, yes. my, in, like something so amazing for me and for you and for Daryl and for Dakota and for Indy and for who was ever out there. This universe is like fully present, this love, this God for every single one of us, uniquely for us, but it, it's governed by principles that we can all learn. Those are constant, but it expresses uniquely through each one of us. And when we sing along... We have play along with according to those principles. Right. And also sing along by singing joyously. Of course. And realizing stop singing along with the dour song of the world and all the concerns and whatever our mind because daryl you told me what satan means this week oh it actually is from a hebrew word which i just learned which means um not understanding the fact it meant from the i meaning meaning i e y e meaning do not be deceived by your senses. Right. So that voice that's telling you it's it can't amazing. happen, and it's basing it on facts and experiences, that's Satan. When it's out of alignment with who we really are, with it, with joy, it's not trustworthy. When it's worry, right. when it's fear, when it's doubt, that's why you got to say, get behind me. Right? That's what yeah. you said. I get it, and I have the shirt. Not today, Satan. It means not today, this voice that's pretending, to, like you said, it's a, it's fear pretending to be a grown-up. Yeah. That's seriousness. It's seriousness telling us, 
It can't happen. Your dream can't happen. It's too much. You better hedge your bets. You better compromise yourself. Or there's inflation. Or that what about is not this? playing yeah. along with the joyful song no. of the universe. And universe, as we learned from Charles Fillmore, means one song. Universe. Yeah. It's, that, yeah. it's not, quote, scientific term <laughs> was someone saying the whole reality is singing one song in harmony in harmony and that anything that is um destructive is an anomaly and that's, that's true right. that's right so let's keep moving here we got um before you read the member of the funniest thing club being yeah a member we got of funniest this thing club. this came last night at 2 30 a.m yeah right which it's from the been, uk so, so it would have been the morning right it would have been yeah probably like nine, hours, nine, or, nine, oh, nine hours nine hours yeah 11 30 so it'd be 11 30 a.m it Just, might be if you think it's grace Deathridge, the person it's grace so anyway she says dear daryl and ed thank you for your podcast that is so much fun i'm listening regularly from the uk I love hearing the readings that inspire you both, your stories and the joy and love that is expressed. I'm also finding that your sharing of what is going on with your lives, perceived problems at work, etc., and your insight of, insights about these moments in time is helping me see my own blind spots and stories running in my mind about my job, etc. A big thank you for all and to all the team, Indy, Jeff Comfort, and your guests. I'm a huge fan of the work of Byron Katie to help me question my thoughts and see what is true and what isn't. Here's a quote that I love from her that I feel moved to share. Sadness is always a sign that you're believing a stressful thought that isn't true for you. It's a constriction and it feels bad. Conventional, conventional wisdom says differently. Conventional wisdom sometimes is what the Bible called Satan, right? Yes. But yeah. the truth is that sadness isn't rational. It isn't a natural response, and it can't ever help you. It just indicates the loss of reality, the loss of the awareness of love. Sadness is the war with what is. It's a tantrum. You can experience it only when you're arguing with God. When the mind is clear, there isn't any sadness. There can't be. And that's from Byron Katie. Blessings uh, are all ours with thanks, Grace. And that pretty much sums up the theme of today's show. Yes. So, oh, and speaking of the theme of today's show. Yeah, we want to tell you how to be a fan of the Funniest Thing Club. And I just want to say one thing about this. I just realized this this morning, why I love this show. You may be a fan of the show, and you think it's Daryl and Ed, but it's Daryl and Ed living these principles. If this was called Grumbling His Thing with Daryl and Ed, and we were just talking like repeat offenders repeating, yeah, just, repeating the news we read it wouldn't be what it is it's a, you are daryl and ed you are you yourself are your own version of this when you live this stuff that's why i love this stuff so yeah go ahead yeah so you might already be considered a, a member of the funniest thing club yes because here's the description of our members and all of us yeah we're a group of truth enthusiasts who live each day as ambassadors of god's love Yes. As we consciously radiate love, we perform everyday miracles and experience better than expected outcomes. If you're already living this way or strive to, then you may consider yourself a member. Yes. We motivate one another by simply sharing how miracles occurred naturally in our circumstances as the result of living lovingly and expectantly. And living lovingly and expectantly is really... Rolling with your homies, I believe you used to say, which is singing along with right. the song of the universe. That includes the angels, the unseen people, anyone we've ever loved. Yeah. They're all with us when we play along, when we play when we sing along. We want to thank you, Patreon folks. Oh yes. Everyone's been stepping up. Uh, donating. There's a $3 button, $5 button. People have been jumping on that. People have been increasing their monthly contributions. We want to thank all of you. Yes. I know some people don't want their names called out, but we do really appreciate you. You can go to patreon.com forward slash funniest thing. We just paid for the monthly rate for the studio, and it was most of it was covered by all of your contributions. Thank but, you. Uh, so thank you very much. Actually, it goes along with this show. It goes along with Patreon. Oh, does this one go first? The good. Oh, no, we read the good news. Yeah. yeah now we got Waddles and Wonk. The, see, this is the thing. <laughs> the real song. That Let is, them know what that book is. This is called is uh, The Science that. of Getting Rich, Attracting Financial Success Through Creative Thought by Wallace D. Waddles. I found this on a $1 shelf outside of a spiritual bookstore in Santa Monica Yeah. and picked it up. And um, it was right when we were listening to a lot of his stuff. And we were talking about it. It's amazing how this stuff well, works. Well, you know what's ironic? How the movie The Secret opens up like all this stuff was hidden 
from yeah i know this book i think was originally written in like 1917 right and this is the book that inspired the movie right that says in the beginning that none of this stuff was available so it's always been available just it's not until we see it and discover it, right? But this is the thing: I understand what she thought when she was saying that, because when we do discover it, it feels like it was hidden. Yeah, because it's so incredibly acceptable to our mind yeah. as being true. Right. But not only that, we start receiving the benefits of applying these principles to our thoughts and our yeah, behavior. Yeah. That we're so blown away, we think nobody's heard of it before. Because well, that's Rhonda how Byrne I was. Rhonda Byrne was a beak wetter. Yes. She immediately sold it as soon as she got it. <laughs> you <laughs> talked about that on a recent show. Well, thank God she did, though, because yeah. so many people have gotten into the law of attraction yeah. and new thought through that movie. So in the uh, I, on page 34 in this book, he said, Wallace Waddle said, You need not hesitate about asking largely. It is your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom, said Jesus. The original substance wants to live as much as possible in you. It wants you to have all that you can or will use for the living of the most abundant life. This is really, really important because so many of us have been taught to be so stingy. We've been taught that asking for what we truly desire is actually like a sin or it's offensive to people. But there's so much good. The people that inspire you were most likely the people that said they bucked the trend of the these uh, the limiting beliefs, and they ask for what they really wanted. It's not like, that's not a sin at all. It's your, your desire never goes anywhere. You might try to push it down. It'll turn into illness. It'll turn into bad situations, bad relay. It's not until you start opening it up and let it coming through and remembering who you are. That, Wait. Yes. You know, you said the word desire. Yeah. Well, do you know what desire, the origin of the word I rem- is? I, we've, no, not right now. I don't. What, what yeah. is it? It means of the father. Of the father. That's, That's why right. it's always That's right. there. Sire. It, it does, of sire, yeah. It does not mean That's something, right. oh, that's silly. I shouldn't expect yes. that much. It means it's coming from within yes. as a coming attraction of what you're entitled to. That's right. Because the, the whole thing is how do you facilitate the manifestation and the demonstration of that desire? Because a lot of times... The father might put that desire in us, but then our our surface uh, like desperations take over, and we try to make it happen instead of like Charles Fillmore said, the the most effective prayer is to let it happen. Yes, that's why in the beginning of the Bible it says, "Let there be light." It doesn't say, "Make there be light." Yeah, find everyone I can, and or there's no chance there's going to be light, but let's hope it comes. It's just let, let there it. be light. Let, let there it. be light. So let it. It says, your faith becomes invincible if you fix upon your consciousness the fact that the desire you feel for the possession of riches is one with the desire of the supreme power for more complete expression. That's what we, yeah. All Perfect that is possible timing. is this seeking expression through human beings. You need not hesitate to ask largely. Your part is to focus and express the desires of God. This is like me. With, I've been telling everyone, this is my last year in this public education thing. And as a result, I keep meeting amazing people telling me, yes, you can work here. Do this. Before it felt, before I started to express it, it felt impossible. And yeah. now it's becoming more and more, not only possible, but a reality and really the only sane choice. Well, you're getting signs of land. Yes. And he says, last thing, this is difficult. This is a difficult point with most people. They retain something of the old idea that poverty and self-sacrifice are pleasing to God. They look upon poverty as if it's part of the plan, as a necessity of nature. They have the idea that God has finished his work and has made all that he can make and that the majority of humanity must stay poor because there's not enough to go around. People hold hold to this erroneous thought so much that they feel ashamed to ask for wealth. They try not to want more than a very modest competence, just enough to make them fairly comfortable. And that's like, that is basically numbing yourself out, right? Because in you're basically have to keep pushing the child of joy within. I have had to, when I live that way, I'm, I have to keep, I was treating the joyful child as if it was something wrong with me. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. This guy just keeps wanting to jump out. You know, he wants to more. He wants to have fun. But it turns out that I, that is my most valuable asset is that desire and that joy and that yes. desire for more. So moving right along. Yes. We want to thank thank our uh, listeners. Yeah, we have so much good stuff. We got great news, folks. And if you ever want to send us a letter, we love going our P.O. box. You can mail it to P.O. Box 
1312 Culver City, California, 90232. And, you know, you said something about the the child. Yeah. And it was in today, sorry, about the uh, about the child leading the way. Right. And I just right. read that in yeah. Emma Fox. Because we often think is. the child is the thing that's disrupting our life. No, no. And it's, it's getting in the way of the, the seriousness we're trying to do, but... That's where we have to flip our thinking. Well, in the Bible, it's he talks in Emmett Fox, around the year with Emmett Fox, one of our morning readings um, on January 6th. And in the beginning, it, it talks about these the aspects of God is mentioned in the Bible, and then he describes them. And the Prince of Peace is one of the things in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 of... Um, Reference to the power within. Yeah. You know, for unto us a child is born, and that means within ourselves, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And listen to this. His name, which means the nature of. In the Bible, when it says the name, it means the nature. What does that name mean? And it's to be called wonderful, a counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. But the main thing to remember, it's like you just said, it's the child within. And a couple of weeks on an episode, I was sharing how I could feel that child give me an idea, even if it was something to put a line on a painting in a certain spot. And then the adult almost jumps in going, oh, no, no, you're probably going to ruin the painting if you do that. Mm -hmm. But every time I just go, okay, I'm going to risk it and go with the child, I am blown away by my own ability. Like, that's the risk you take. By following the child, forgetting what your rational mind is saying, Mm -hmm. which is the serious fear pretending to be rational within me, and going for it, the greatest gift you'll get is discovering your ability. It's amazing. So listen to what he says here. It is a child. He says, once you have attained true peace of soul, meaning taking the time to meditate, like we do every morning. You have made it possible for the child to teach you new things utterly beyond the compass of your present understanding. Yes. And the best part is when we turn things over to the child, he takes it over to accomplishment, accomplish those things, whatever your desire is, if it's a physical healing, if it's a financial windfall, if it's a new opportunity for living or a home, whatever that is, the best part is when we let it go, when I let it go, I got to remember this part. He assumes it with joy, or as in Isaiah, in Isaiah, the same chapter, 9, verse 7, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. That means when we turn things over, it's not, oh, I hope he gives it. No, it means as soon as we turn it over, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, it's a joyful grasping of it and going, okay, we're going to handle this, Ed. Don't yeah. you worry. Okay, Indy, we're going to heal this. We're going to fix this. Don't worry. Okay, Daryl. Okay, Dakota. You know? Yeah. I can't. I'm so excited you gave me. Don't worry about a thing. That's right. That's a hundred. Yeah, because the worry only gets in the way of the good manifesting. And our word has power. So we got some good words from postcards from Kirky this week, all the way from. Where is this from Germany or Poland? That's Germany. He Dusseldorf. Splits his time. Dusseldorf. Daryl and Ed. Man's ignorance of the future is the result of his ignorance of his inner talking. His inner talking mirrors his imagination, and his imagination is a government in which the opposition never comes into power. And that's from Neville Goddard. Kirky loves you. And there you know you what? Ignorant and ignorance of doesn't mean we don't hear. Ignorance, the word ignorance is from the root. To ignore. Yeah, it's to in ignore. the word. Ignore. To choose, to choose to not listen to the child within. Yeah, because we all hear it. And a lot of times the people that seem like they hear it the least, that's just because their personality is so used to being guarded and protecting themselves. One of my, So someone uh, I started working with, my friend Chloe, who likes the show. Hello, Chloe. She was saying that the people who treat you like a a B here. The people who treat you poorly, this is the way she looks at when she's in schools or yeah. anywhere. If they're treating her poorly, it's not a reflection of her. It's a reflection of the fact that outside of that environment, they probably feel like they have no power. That 
this is their place where they feel like they can wield their power, but it's only really reflecting Ugh. who they are. And probably outside of that environment, they don't feel good about themselves. And maybe inside that environment, they're masking it. So we got a quick one from uh, a postcard from Mark Hicks at truthunity.net. It goes with what you're saying. It says, it has a great Charles Fillmore quote. I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm and spring forth with a mighty faith to do the things that ought to be done by me. If you go to truthunity.net, you can order some cool stuff. They got, um, he, he ordered 2,000 5 by 5 inch stickers that have, um, let's see, I think the Myrtle Fillmore quote, God is my help in every need, and the Charles Fillmore quote. So go to truthunity.net. There's a lot of great resources there. The front of this postcard says sizzle with enthusiasm. Thank you, Mark Hicks. Thank you, Truth Unity. We got we got a cool uh, oh man an amazing contribution from the amazing minister Nancy Norman um, this week. I actually helped pay for uh, more than cover with uh, with the with the Patreon this month's uh, expenses. Expenses. So thank you, Nancy Norman. Not only that, but she sent us such cool things: little angels, hearts, um, aff for affirmation cards. We love you, Nancy. Yes. Check out Nancy's ministry on YouTube. Look up Nancy Norman. You'll find her. Barbara Gallagher Weatherman provided uh, Starbucks cards for Daryl, myself, Indy, and, and Stephen Tom Thorpe, yeah. who's been a guest and helps out with the show as well. And she said to Daryl, Ed, Stephen, Indy, and your families, keep on spreading the truth. We need you. Your vibrations are awesome. Sending love and light for a healthy, prosperous, and powerful new year for all. Love, Barbara Weatherman. We love you too, Barbara. Oh, man. We got to put something on for this part. Do we really? I mean, I, I know, know you're you, afraid. You want to be. No, whatever you like. Put that on, man. You're never so reluctant. I've never seen you so reluctant to step out boldly. <laughs> well, there, we do oh, have. Wait, I'm going to leave this on. I'm going to take mine off. We got oh, yeah. masks no. from um, wait, Sarah guy. and Glenn. Yeah. And uh, we got a card here. I also. So it says. Thank you so much. We often talk about being the Bernie and uh, the Ernie and Bert, the Bernie and Ert, the but Ernie I and think Bert. He, his head's more pointed like yours, and mine's more round. But I see. I'm just going you by have an interesting show. relationship with that thing. That looks great, man. I know. If this you don't know, we're on YouTube. Go to YouTube. Uh, find funniest thing with Daryl and Ed. You can see these wonderful um, Ernie and Bert masks we're wearing. I leave. I like to leave the price tag on so the kids know it's fresh. Glenn and Sarah said, "Dear Daryl and Ed, this is a long overdue <laughs> package." <laughs> He almost choked. <laughs> <laughs> to thank you for all that you do. We recently took a trip to Mendocino. See the postcard. I uh, listened to your shows during the drive up and back. We're so grateful to have such inspiring wor uh, words to listen to. In close, you'll find some socks for Ed. These are, they say, you can do it. With a ukulele. You. Ukulele. And uh, it says, a journal for Daryl. It's is, over there. It's here. right But here. here's the amazing it thing. It says yes on it. And what, oh yeah, yes. And join them. We got some masks, some t Rule 62 chips, and Rule 62 is, what is it? Don't take yourself so seriously. Don't take yourself too darn seriously. Yeah, we thought you might enjoy. We love you, Glenn and Sarah. Thank you, Glenn and Sarah. Wait, We're just in case our listeners are going, what's Rule 62 mean? A guy came up with 61 rules for his organization. Alcoholics Anonymous, I believe. Well, it was like a separate little whole like thing he was creating. Right, but he, I mean that's the organization he was bringing it to. No, right? no, no. He was creating like a specialty. Oh, yeah. It's like turns into a big, long, crazy. Is it story. about recovery? Kind okay, of. Okay. Anyway, anyway go on. so that'll take us another ten. No, no, minutes. no, no. We don't want ten. So minutes. I just want to do the quick. Story. He created some sort of organization, but everyone he came up with sixty-one rules and regulations. Uh -huh. If you want to participate in it, and of course, because of such a controlling, the whole thing just collapsed. Yes. And in the end, he realized, you know, control has its limits. But the best part about the story is this guy was able to laugh himself, laugh at himself and learn about yeah. that. And he said, I have one more rule to add. 62, do not take yourself too darn serious. Well, and just let the whole thing go. That's what we all come to. Eventually we realize everything that we want to be true, and it is true, but it's, something we, it's not something we can force to happen. It's something we learn to cooperate with. We don't force it onto other people. We right. don't have to change and control the world. No. We ourselves learn to cooperate with the good we desire. And we let, that helps us let go of resentment and hostility and control and turning into the opposite of what we want to be. 
You know, when, when we try so hard, we try to make it happen. When we relax, we become a beacon of light to everyone around us. We begin singing along with life. And then it encourages other people. Greg Novak on Facebook said, God, thank you for the wit and inspiration Daryl and Ed brought in this episode of Funniest Thing. I see you on a YouTube screen capture below. And it says, on the YouTube webpage, the robot engines place many other funny, witty, and famous people with you. It was Jeff Bridges, Jeff Bridges, Bridges, Steve Buscemi. Black Jeopardy with Tom Hanks. Those are the things that YouTube rec recommended along, along with, with our show. <laughs> yes. We love you, Daryl and Ed. Michael Schoonover said another great practical truth show with Ed and Daryl, two of the most powerful truth teachers of our time. This is a soul ether alert. Thank you, Michael. Vicky Carolyn said, ha, 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 love it. Donna Amato said, Gabriel's letter and Insight Rocks. That's Gabriel Perez. Yeah, thank you, Gabriel, for sending that letter. Go to DarylAndEd.com to find out everything we do. We want to thank Chief Engineer Jeff Comfort. He's in Kansas City, Kansas. He handles the audio part. If you're listening on a podcast, you you are hearing the work of Jeff Comfort, part of what he does. So we, each week, he takes us right into, into the comfort, comfort zone. zone. Yeah. Once again, thank you, Indy Fawcett. We're at Chobo Studios. Go to ChoboStudios.com if you want to be a part of it or PodShuttle.io. He'll edit all of your shorts and reels and everything for social media, YouTube. How are you, sir? Doing great. Loving it. I'm on fire. I'm feeling better. Oh, doing good. Great. Uh, and a reminder to all the listen audio listeners out there, go to the YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. Yes. Let's do it. Thank you, buddy. All right, shout out to Silent Unity. I listened to it on the way to the show today. It is 800-NOW-PRAY or 800-669-7729. If you're finding yourself, if you want encouragement to sing along, maybe you're having trouble singing along or even believing there's a universal yes. song, call Silent Unity, 800-669-7729. Number one, if press one if you want to pray with someone, which is amazing. They'll pray affirmatively with you. If you're a little bit... Don't have the time or you're a little sheepish, press two and there's pre-recorded prayers. Yes. Just let that play while you're driving or sitting on your sofa and that alone will begin to shift your consciousness. Oh, by the way, today's show is called The Universe is Playing Your Song. Sing along with Dakota Ledford. The universe is constantly conspiring on your behalf. It is easier than we think to sing along. The key is to scheme less and trust more. Remind yourself frequently throughout the day to repeat the inspired chorus. God is joyfully handling my affairs. Regardless of your concerns or aspirations, cast the burden of bringing about the solution or opportunity onto God. And the all wise assumes it with joy. Yes. It is at that very moment that your difficulties have seen the beginning of the end. On this episode, Daryl and Ed remind each other and listeners that success is a must when we treat our concerns with a joyful trust. And during the second segment, debutante. Dakota Legford, Ledford, excuse me, Legford. That could be a nice stage name, Legford. But it's Dakota Ledford. She's going to join us in the studio to discuss today's daily word, days, uh, to discuss today's reading, which is yes, and talk about other things. Speaking of yes. Oh, wait. Your Hot Pocket's ready. Indy, what are we eating yeah, today? Sorry, guys. <clears throat> it's ham. Oh. Ham, 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 ham kick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can't kick the ham. And we'll, oh, can we do our three breaths before we go to the next segment? Yeah. Let's hear this one little bit and then we'll do our breaths and we'll okay. go to the segment. I'm excited. A All friend right, so said first. recently, this is from God Will See You Through. This book is Money in the Bank. If you want to sing along with the universe that's yes. playing your song. A friend said recently, I used to spend my time asking why. Why? Why has this difficult thing come into my why? life? Now, even though a challenge may take time and patience for its outworking, I put all the energy of my thought and feeling into the words, thank you, God. Sometimes I need to say them a hundred times a day to keep myself up and on the beam. As a result, I have an inner peace and freedom that amaze me. Good is happening and daily demonstrations are evident. Yes. Tra Charles Fillmore writes the highest form of prayers to open our mind and quietly realize that the one omnipresent intelligence knows our thoughts and instantly answers even before we have audibly expressed our desires. This being true, we should ask and at the same time give thanks that we have already received. Begin this process now that so, so that miracles can flow into your life and affairs. Say thank you, God, when even a little light dawns or a small degree of understanding comes through. This is leads perfect to our three breaths. Mm -hmm. You ready? You're going to kick them off? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ready? <sighs> Let's take a deep breath to clear our mind. I don't know why you took your... Ernie off. Uh, I couldn't have my glasses on and my Ernie. Plus, Indy and I decided before the show it was a hat day. So I had to put the hat back on. You could put it on your hat. Like Fazaro did. Fazaro style? Yeah. 
Get it on. Tag anymore. All right, let's try. Oh, this. you're not going fresh. There you go. All right, there we go. It's a hat day for sure. All right, we're Beautiful. having a good time. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's take it. Oh, this is from the great uh, Sage Freddie Mercury. He was so high, high as a kite after his morning routine. Yes, when it inspired these affirm this affirmative tune. So you got to be like Freddie Mercury on a day when he was just feeling on top of the world and sing along because Freddie Mercury sang along, didn't he? Yeah. All right, let's take a deep breath. Ah. <sighs> don't stop me! Don't stop me! Don't stop me! I'm having a good time. <sighs> <laughs> Don't stop me. Don't stop me. Don't stop me. I'm having a good time. <sighs> Don't stop me. Don't stop me. Don't stop me. I'm having a good time. <sighs> All right. We're having a good time now, but just wait. Coming up next, debutante. D divine debutante, I might add. Dakota Ledford joins us in the studio to discuss today's reading. Yes. Thank you for listening to Funniest Thing with Daryl and Ed, live from Chobo Studios. Ew. All right. Welcome back to Funniest Thing with Daryl and Ed. Let's see here. Today's guest, today's show is called The Universe is Playing Your Song. Sing along for Sing crying along. out loud. We have live in the studio today a good friend of ours, a writer, someone who practices this stuff, yes. who lives this stuff. Her name is Dakota Ledford. We're so happy you're here. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. <laughs> you are the coolest person we've ever had in studio with us. That's yes. Nice. Doesn't feel true, but thank you. It's true. Well, that's a very cool person thing to say. <laughs> that's right. I've never been cool a day in my life, truly. Getting cooler by the second. Everything you say is just cool. I know. Oh. It's amazing. So we want to read from a deep breath of life. We mm -hmm. know you didn't, uh, we know you've lovingly been leaving this out for someone else to yeah. read. So you didn't read it today. So we thought we'd read it to you. It does go with the show. It's, it's our buyer friend. Alan Cohen, who was a guest, who was a guest on the show. And what's funny is Daryl and I have been listening to uh, The Course in Miracles Made Easy. That's right? right. By Alan Cohen. It's an audiobook. And it's, we were both like, ah, oh, man, this is like, it wasn't exciting. There's was no right? magic. It felt like. So I turned it up to 1.3%, no, 1.3 times the speed. And it went from dreary to very exciting. And Since he went to 1.5%. Yeah, and it doesn't sound fast. No, it just sounds because like someone with enthusiasm reading it. It's crazy. Yeah, now we love the book. But if you get it, Course in Miracles Made Easy, if you're going to listen to it, 1.3 to 1.5 times. Yes. Highly recommended. Yeah. And after a while, you don't even realize you sped it up. It's this, crazy. It reminds me of when I watched the Tiger Woods documentary, and I don't like golf, but uh -huh. it turns out that if you cut out all of the walking and the boring parts, golf is so exciting. Yeah. Uh, you yes. Got it the most wow. Yes. Yeah. Right. There yes, you go. There you this go. is very similar. Yes. Because yeah. listening to him talk at his <laughs> regular cadence is like watching the boring parts of golf. Well, yep. you know, I before I met Fazzaro and um, Daryl, that is, at the um, Agape Spiritual Center, um, <laughs> I thought I wasn't I didn't know that joy was legal in spirituality. I didn't realize that every friggin spiritual text says joy is the. The result, joy is the goal. And joy, joy is, is the, the strength. Cause. Yeah, joy is the, the, the substance to rely on. Yeah, and there's a lot of these like teachers that think, and I used to, I, it was killing me because a lot of spiritual teachers think that being equanimous, oh. I don't ever feel anything other than this. This is the final resting place <laughs> because I've met in life. Ah! Dude, the way the joy is what brings it to life. It means you being you. That's what we're talking about. And it's it can't be contained. It can't it's not safe in the way people think of it. It it I mean, even in the Bible it says this. It it, it severs relationships it, that are false. It, it it tears down those BS walls so yeah. that we can be ourselves, man. I so. like that you said you didn't know it was legal because one of the first things that blew my mind when I met Mike Dugan when I was 23. Yeah. Um, when I, he, I was telling him like all these things I was concerned about or things I had done that I felt bad about. Right. He was, well, why don't you just give that to God? And I was like, 
Like, that's legal? Right. Like, I thought you had to hide all that from God or never right. ask for things you want right. and only try to, like, prove you're good to God. It was right. so twisted. But once he, I was like, holy cow, that's legal? And he goes, yeah, that's the stuff. God doesn't want you carrying that stuff around. He's yeah. going to take care of it. I was like, oh, my God, this is incredible. It was such you know, a light bulb moment totally. in my brain. Hey, let me say this one other thing that's legal is just doing things because you love them. We were just talking to you, Dakota, about being a writer. Yeah. And you were talking about, you had been talking to Stephen Tom Thorpe. No, I think it was the other No, Steve, Bruni. Bruni. Mm -hmm. Bruni, my bad. Yeah. And what were you guys talking about with regards to doing the writing? Do you remember what you were just yeah, talking about? Yeah, well, us? I was just like, you know, scared about work and money and all that stuff. And he just said, like, if you knew you were never going to get a writing job and never going to make a dime a day in your life, would you still do it? And uh -huh. that just like wasn't even a question for me. It's just always been what I do. And even the moments I think I'm not going to, I just like end up doing it anyway. So yeah. I, it doesn't even feel like a choice. It just feels like an is. So right. It's who. It's part. You came to do it. Is what I think. Yeah. The child. That's, that's what we're talking about. About singing along. It's about doing the things. I mean, I'm 48 now, and I feel like more and more I see like there are certain things that I came here to do. No one ever had to tell me that I was going to do them. And I think the the longer I get here on the planet, the more I realize. Wait, I want to do those things while I'm here. I don't care what I get from it or anything else because I get so much from actually doing it and being myself. And it's by doing the things we love that we are singing along with this, the universal song that we're talking about, right? Because that yes. something inside you is singing. You're just letting it out, right? Oh, I mean, yes. like there's something inside you that's motivating you to write, right? Yeah, it feels like uh, like humming. I've, said, I've described it like this before. It used to happen when I was at school sometimes. And it sometimes yeah. happens when I'm doing certain types of writing where it just like, it's just all like hums if that makes sense yeah. yeah along and it doesn't feel like it just feels like it's flowing out yes do you do you sense like it's already there and you're letting it come through like when you talk about that humming like it's an energy that's there or no not necessarily it's more just like when i start uh -huh. it feels like a flow as oh, opposed wow. to when i've done other things and it feels like i'm constantly just coming up against a barrier which has yeah. happened before too where you're just like banging your head against a wall like no, it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. That was a thing for me, like, in my mid-20s, happened a lot with dating, where, like, I could not recognize when a door was closed. And I would, like, metaphorically speaking, oh. bang on the door until I was bloody, and it would just not open, not open. And I thought I was being punished in a lot of ways. And it was only with time and seeing, like, what happened and yeah. realizing, oh, no, I was getting pushed out of the way of oncoming traffic, but I refused to believe right. it. Wow. Wow. That leads into this reading that we have from Yeah, Alan I Cohen. can't Perfect. believe you said that. Is, uh, Andy, do we need Dakota to be closer to the mic, or is she good? No, sounds great. Okay, great. Cool. Um, one other thing that both of you were saying, that it's, a, it's actually from uh, Eric Butterworth, and it describes my experience with the things I like to do that mm -hmm. are part of me that are creative, mm -hmm. and it sounds like the same for the both of you. And it's, I'm not rewarded for my creativity, yes. whatever that is, but I'm rewarded by it, by mm. the process of it. And Ed was mentioning before the show started about writing for the local paper for how many years now? Over 10 years. And not receiving... Direct compensation from the newspaper. However, mm -hmm. because of how you were vibrating and feeling, how the joy you feel in doing it and letting go of it, actually... The fine, the the your supply doesn't necessarily need what I'm getting at. Doesn't necessarily need to come from the crea exact creative channel right. you're working on. It usually comes from some other area, so right. you can continue doing the creative work. I was listening to a podcast about this last night, and I wish that I could remember exactly what he was saying, but it was um, Phil Stutz, that psychiatrist guy. Oh yeah, and he was drawing out some map thing, and he was talking about this, and I really wish I was cooking while I was doing it so I wish I'd been like in it because it, it was very applicable but he was essentially saying that you put something out into the universe and then you you do it and you bring it towards you and it will appear when it appears in the way it's supposed to appear yeah. but you just have to do it yes. in forward motion type of thing you know part of the reason why I'm like breaking free from this public education at least the way I've been holding it whatever whatever's going to happen there is because I was born to do the work I do with kids. I would do it. If a kid came here, I, I could just do it because it's natural for me to do. 
when there's all these other things attached, fear of losing my job, fear of like, if I do something wrong, I'm going to get in trouble, fear of like, what if I lose, you know, like the money involved, that all gets in the way of me. Some that Those fears, when those are present, which yeah. a lot of them are like so present in the mental atmosphere of that in- environment, it it really blocks the flow of me doing what I come there to do and um, or potentially this week, one day I was high as a kite next day. I, I was at like mental hell, but I was used to that in the past. It was mental hell a lot. It was just what I was used to. Now I'm not used to that because I've been stepping out boldly so that I was, I prayed to God and actually I was making fun of my, some of my friends with all due respect. I said something about step seven in AA and I didn't know what it was. Right. But I just sent that out to somebody just, and then I said, what is step seven? So I looked it up and it was about like something about like turning over these character defects to God to handle it. That's what I read yeah. in this little yeah, thing yeah. on Google. And I knew letting God do, yeah, the, letting uh, God do it, not me trying to will it, it be yeah. gone. And it was life changing for me in that moment. And I needed to hear it. And I've been using it, which is my meditations and prayer lately has been, I don't need anything, God. I'm turning over like obviously I've worked so my my ASS off to try to change these mental patterns and stuff using even spiritual psychology tools, metaphor, right. whatever. And I'm just like and it's in a way sometimes the desperation kind of gets a hold of those tools and starts it's the same mind that creates the problems is now trying to use the tools to fix them. Yeah. So I've been just say, I've had these powerful meditations where I'm just like I don't need anything God. Thank you so much for everything. I and I just Obviously, I just turn over. I, I don't have any control over what my mind's doing in this situation, and I'm just going to let you go to work. And I, one day I said, you're gonna, I, you will reveal to me in a loving and kind way what it is that's this, – where is this guilt coming from? I'm not going to try to figure it out. You'll show me. And like that night I re- reflected on this day, which was like mentally hellish, and I realized the whole day I was trying to work it on my own. I was trying to yeah. do the whole thing mentally on my own. It made it seem like – the people I was working with weren't helping me. It made me see it, the whole thing just felt terrible, and then it unraveled because the next day my my whole priority was I'm not I'm just gonna relax and trust that God is there, and all these little things came up. One teacher was out. This stuff that normally would be difficult or I'd stress potentially I'd stress out about it. This day I was like, no, something good's gonna come from this. Something's good, and it turned out to be heaven compared to the day before. The yeah. person who replaced the teacher was amazing. And another sub came in yes. unexpectedly for someone else who ended up helping me with all my groups, which was like, a, was, was something I'd been wanting someone to help with this stuff. And the whole day changed because I, I just woke up to the truth that I'm not doing this alone. None of us are doing, like, you as a writer are not writing alone. The universe that's putting that in yeah. there is connecting you with a lot of other people that w- want to support and help you in doing your thing. Whatever yeah. we do. It's such BS that I have created this like cave in my mind where I do things alone. There's no such thing as that. When surrendering into this divine flow where I feel connected to the song that the universe is playing. Yeah. Wow, what a difference. Yes. And should I read this? Yeah, now? read this. This seems this to is, go perfect with everything that's said. This this is like my two choices or all of our choices in a nutshell about are yes. we gonna I was saying before at the break, things come up. And our conscious, subconscious tries to wrestle with them because we're afraid. So what do we do in those moments? Do we believe that we have to wrestle or do or we do scheme. something to let go Ugh. of, like Eric Butter would say, let go of the concern? Eric Butterworth would say, don't treat the condition, treat the concern yeah. first and then see what – sometimes the condition takes care of itself. Like it always takes care of itself. Yeah. It always takes care of itself. Yeah. When I treat the – when I treat the concern, the condition always has yeah. a revolutionary change for the yes, better yes. or always turns out to be a blessing in disguise. Yes. Like you were saying, when you look back, you might know this one because it's actually from January 3rd. Hmm. So uh, I love this one. It's called Grow with the Flow mm-hmm. instead of just going with the flow. Yes, that's right. We do have to expand with the flow. We can't stay the same. We do have to grow with the flow. Yes, and it says here, the quote, I said to a man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand in the hand of God. That shall be your better than light. 
and safer than a known way. Yes. And that's quoted by King George the Sixth of England. Two men were walking beside a river on their way to a town downstream when a storm broke and a flash flood washed both men into the river. One man panicked, tried to fight his way back to shore and drowned. The other man realized that the torrent was beyond his control and relaxed to the best of his ability, letting the river carry him. To his happy surprise, the river deposited him on the banks of the town he was headed toward in a much shorter time than it would have taken him to walk. When you come up against a situation you cannot control, trust that the universe is working on your behalf. When we fight what is, we lose our power. The sage capitalizes on the energy at hand and makes it work on his behalf. And then the affirmation is, Help me to remember that you are present in all situations, guiding me home even when I cannot see how. I am always in the presence of love. Everything that happens to me is a part of the plan for my good. Yes. That's good. All right, everyone. We'll see you guys. (laughs) Is that known as a mic drop? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> so where are we chobo studios yes who's here dakota dakota how are you feeling i feel good how are yeah. you feeling feeling really good there's like a that 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 reading brought this like there's a certain silence that sometimes enters like i know oh! it calms everything down you know what this is a perfect time for i'm glad we had that silence oh yeah Because look what we're going to do. This is an exercise. Now that we're going into a new year, I'm going to give each of you, this is similar to a magic trick, a sheet of this tiny little square inch piece of paper. I'll do one as well. Indy can do one too, right? Yeah. Indy can do one. I'll hop in there. Okay. Great. So now what we're going to do is with our pen, we're going to write, and since it's nice and small, like what is the one real thing within your personality, or it could be something in your physical life that you want to just let go of, Mm -hmm. that you don't want to bring into the new year. You really just want to be rid of it. What is that? You can use my pen when I'm done. And we're going to write that down, folks. And if you have a little square inch piece of paper, You'll be able to, uh, your mind will instantly narrow it down to the one thing that goes, I just want to be rid of that. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. It could be a character trait. It could be a fear. It could be. Yeah. I I just, I I don't mind sharing. I'll just let you know what I wrote. If you're listening or watching, I, this is one thing I really don't want to carry into the new year. Self-doubt. I don't want that anymore. Right. It's unnecessary. Yeah. And now what we're going to do in the studio and this is fun for you to do at home, too. And I learned this from Valerie Reeves, Reverend Valerie Reeves, who was a guest on our show. India yes. and I went to her Living Out Loud, you know, intention, intention setting workshop, right? Intention setting workshop. And this was a great uh, exercise because it's symbolic, but it really made me feel like I was rid of it. Right. So what you use is flash paper, which you can get really inexpensive on, on right. Amazon. It's magician paper. So when you're done writing, watch. And we're going to put it to the candle. Wow. What do you think of that? That's amazing. It's gone, folks. And mine is actually about being hard on myself. Yes. And I, I, what I'm replacing it with is trusting that God is there to help me, that life is there to help yes. me. Yes. And I didn't know. I was like my wife... And one of their friends said, you are being really hard on yourself. And I didn't know that. I No, no, no. I have a lot of important things to do, and I've got to get them done. And if you knew what I would. That's like, I didn't realize that was yes. being hard on me. Yes. I didn't know what being. Sometimes it's easy to see it from the outside looking at someone else. Yes. But from the inside out, I had to redefine a lot of my thinking as being hard on myself. Yes. I didn't realize another thing. I call it the punisher. Yeah. I didn't like last night. I realized, wow, the Punisher is coming out. Like wow, it's not. She puts on a leather glove. And yes. really lets you have it. She really, oh, right in the, you know what? <laughs> wow, right in the bread basket. <laughs> so I'm letting go of being hard on myself. All right. Wow. Mindy, you want to? Uh, dr- I'm letting go of not being whole and healed. 
Yes. There you go. go. Wow. That. Brilliant. All right. Dakota. Um, mine's just Here. fear in general. Here, I, this has been a year. We'll let Indy get the shot. So right. you can see. Let's Hang hold on. the candle. Oh, boy. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, the last couple of years, I feel like I've just been, especially the last year, I've been just like scared of everything. Uh -huh. Finances, being alone forever. I'll never get to do what I want. All this stuff. And it stops me. Yeah. I don't really want to be stopped anymore. So. There you go. Brilliant. Ah! <laughs> all right. There we go. That's right. All, and we were all saying that it's time <clears throat> for us to sing along yes because that's what if if there was no universal song it would be fine to be afraid we wouldn't even notice we just yeah. or it'd be fine to be hard on myself because it would just be what i do but it's going against the current yeah. of life and that's why it sucks that's why it hurts that's why it feels bad so that's the blessing yes is. it's telling us it's time to let yes. go of that thing and, and it's really good that i have to be constantly be reminded that there is something to let go into, that there is this divine flow. The Tao has just called it the way. Yeah. The Tao, the flow, the thing that has no name. It's, oh, it's yes. The, that everything's always moving in a positive yes. direction. Like the, you know, that book, The Tao of Pooh is all about that. How Winnie yeah. the Pooh is just a, <laughs> he would just go along and things would work out. Yes. And he was all about, I think we're trying too hard right now. Why don't we just stop trying and start, yeah. let's eat some honey. And then all of a sudden, you know what I heard last thing? When we are, because our, our bodies are not symmetrical, right? If we're a blindfold, I think it was. Oh yeah, no, we just read that. It's that? in my book. In that book, uh, that book that I got at the thrift Holy store. Holy smokes! We always go to the cool what? shop in Burbank yes. after the show, and we found a cool book. Yes. And it said, I'll just say the gist of it, unless you want to say them before. Well, I was going to say the name of the book is uh, More, 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 Tell Me Why. And more, was, more, more. Tell me why. But here's the thing I was embarrassed to tell you guys. You I, read it in the nude last night? No. I, did, I told Indy afterwards, uh, the next day. Well, that book, because my dad couldn't be bothered by all my questions, yeah. he actually got me that book. No way. Yeah. Holy smokes, that smoke, exact that's book. crazy. But I felt embarrassed so we found to share it. that. Wow, you should, that's brilliant. That's spirit. That's incredible. How I could know. that book from a little know. kid in New Jersey, what I year know. would you say that was? Well, it was probably right after my mom left, so I was probably eight. So eight, eight minus, I don't know, what's 62 plus eight? 70. 70. So that's 52 years ago. Yeah. In New Jersey, your dad gave you that book, and we stumbled upon it in this random little part and of these books. And you're gonna quote, and I'm so. But what it makes sense, it's like he said, if when, you want to blindfold trick on, someone, yeah, if you want to play a trick on your friend, blindfold them and ask them to walk a straight line. And he said you can't do it because your body is um, imbalanced, and you'll work. You'll automatically start work walking in a circle without even knowing it. Hmm. But it also said if we're lost and we're not. In, like yes. tapping into the intuitive that's why mo often people who are lost end up they going in circles yeah they don't realize they keep going in a circle and this is metaphysical because when we act out of fear we all know what it feels like we just keep going in a circle yeah. we don't get anywhere we never get anywhere because we are spiritually blind when fear is running the show yeah it's like taking a blindfold off and that's why these principles and talking about this stuff with people is so refreshing because it's taking the blindfold off there's a lot of lately we've heard this from different spiritual teachers that the world believes a lie the, there's this big yes. lie that there's not this loving presence yes. guiding us that we're all we're on our own and they perpetuate like it gets i don't want to say they because it's just like there's almost like a cloud of just thinking yeah, it's not like they, there's a this group of people that is against me. Then no, like no. they quote don't even know me. They don't care. But <clears throat> there's this consciousness that we get to wake up from, and once we do, wow! Like the Buddha said when they said, "Are you a god?" He's like, "Yeah, just awake, man." Well, Buddha. Speaking of Buddha and how this works and the universe being in harmony and the good thing about writing or whatever it is you're doing that you love to do, right? We all got to remember that the universe is always conspiring on our behalf. It's always bringing yeah. the opportunity towards us. But a lot of time we're thinking we have to scheme to make it happen. So we're not aware of it. Right. And that's the whole thing of the booty. The booty. The booty. Well, I'm kinda, booty call. I'm, I'm putting two words together. And you get a, you know, if you combine Buddha with the Bodhi tree, you get a booty call. But it really <laughs> was a booty call. Yeah. Because he just waited under the tree. 
and all his good came to him. Right, because all these nightmares were going on around the tree. Yeah. And he just sat still until all that stuff cleared up. And then he's like, whoa. Yeah. Thank God I didn't react to and all that. And reinforcing the idea that the universe really is harmonious is if it wasn't God's will to get well, to be well, then our bodies would have never healed. Right. And if one person heals from a seemingly uh, impossible illness, well, then that means it's possible for all people. It doesn't mean it's impossible no. for others. Yeah. And and even when I was uh, new to this stuff, I'd be like, oh, but what about the news? You know, when I was still new to learning all these principles and not really buying, I'd go, but what about all the news? And I think it was the guy at the Master Gunny Sergeant Mike Curran that said, well, that's great. He goes, because if it's in the news, it means it's not the norm. It's the exception. Right. It means that it means for the most part, what is really going on mm. is harmonious. Right, right. And what's in the news, if it's in the news, it's not in the news because it's like our everyday existence, which right. is pretty peaceful and harmonious. It's always a reflection of, ooh, here's something, here's an exception. And that's why it's so jarring. Right, because even when we're in fear or being hard it's on not myself, the norm. I'm sitting there fearful or hard on myself most of the time in nice clothes, in a comfortable environment with food, with inspired yeah. books I could be reading. All of that is like that's the reality. So that's much the truth. more yes. good truth in that moment. Yes. But I was just thinking, like, the challenge of this stuff is we have to work on our own consciousness. Because even if you're yes. listening to this or watching this, be aware: is there a voice inside you that's going, "That's great for them," or "Here's that one thing that I have to, oh, yeah. I have to be this way." But Oops. realize that only the only thing that holds us to these limiting ideas is that voice that's telling us. Oh yeah, and the, a lot of times that's an advisor. Maybe it was a parent that used to whisper these things in our ear or something, and. We let it in and we let it in. It stayed, you know, like we invited oh, yeah. it into the living room and it's still sleeping on our sofa. We got to kick that guy out, that that voice out or tell it to go out and get a job, a new job. Tell that voice to start, go out and have fun. Yeah. Write more, sing more, dance more, surf more, whatever it is, yeah. go out, whatever. Because a lot of times the most creative part of us is the our imagination used against us. Yeah, that's but it. But that same imagination could be imagining amazing things. It's just kind of almost forgotten in a moment that that's what it's capable oh, of yeah. doing. Just to let everyone know that we think of those thoughts all the time, all even the time. after reading all these books. Yeah. When I get into buying into one of those horrible thoughts, I'm like, oh, it isn't going to work on this. I wish I was believing like I did when I was brand new because I was really a believer mm -hmm. and it's not going to fix this or oh, it's working for them, but not for me. And all that, I go, whoa, yeah. I really got to shake that off. Right. And that's what though even Jesus had those thoughts. Of course, man. Yeah. I know. That's a that's an important thing. It's in the Bible where he sat yeah. in the desert. Um meaning he you could let go of them, but don't beat yourself up and buy into them. Yeah, exactly. That's the key. Yeah, cuz he got, yeah, exactly. So so Dakota, when you're hearing all this stuff and you talked about the fear that was been coming mm -hmm. up and you're wanting to let what are the what are you thinking about all of that right now? Oh, it just reminded me of Pro the happiest I ever got in my life actually was right after one of the worst breakups I ever had. Mm -hmm. It was like 2018. It was very, <clears throat> looking back, it was like, you ever be so delusional and then you look back yeah. eventually? Yeah. What was I thinking? I got <clears throat> involved with this guy who was heavily using drugs and he was saying all the things that I had always wanted someone to say. And he, was, he still is so good looking and like funny. And, and mm -hmm. I just thought, but he was getting loaded and we got together and I really was like, oh, I found the love of my life. We're going to get married. And he got sober and then turned around and was like, what are you doing here, basically? And my life crumbled apart. Mm -hmm. Everything that I had planned, everything I thought I wanted. Right. And I started meditating a lot, which was probably part of it. But this other part of it was that my therapist pissed me off because he called me risk averse. It's like this one thing he said. Okay. He was like, yeah, it's because you're risk averse and you won't take chances. And I got so mad. Wow. I was like, I will prove you wrong. And I started to just say yes to everything that was in front of me. Wow. Just as like revenge. I mean, he cares and that he wants me to do well, but it's not like- No, but, I hear you. No, but this is sometimes works in our favor. Yeah, I started, and it was just little things too sometimes. Like I remember I had never crowd surfed and I go to the kinds of concerts where people crowd surf, but I was always way too scared. Right. And I was at this 
concert with my friend Matt and I looked at him I'm like have you ever crowd sourced he looks at me like I'm crazy and he goes yeah of course and the guy in front of us turns around and he's like oh so you want to go up and that was the first time in my life I ever wow. did it wow. and, <laughs> and it was it was it's fun I mean it's not like that I was always terrified I was going right. to get dropped or I don't even know what I was scared of but um, it was just stuff like that and that was probably the first time in my life that I got really really happy I didn't know what happy right. looked like and then I think when the pandemic hit and everyone was forced inside and yeah. forced to stop doing right. things, it's been like a hole that I'm trying to claw my way out of. And right. that's been tough. Isn't that amazing that I love that example. Like you could go to that concert in a non-receptive place to that mm -hmm. experience, but you just spoke it to some, and yeah. your friend and someone overheard you. And now you have this elevated experience and exciting, and now you're floating on top of the crowd instead of being just another part of the crowd. There's so much like metaphorical stuff about yeah. that. It's all about that receptivity and expressing our desire and just being creating an opening for the good to come through and then just crowd surf that baby. But and get on it. But this is the best thing to wrap this show up with because that's still the got best a, a daily word. Oh, too. No, we're not gonna forget that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean this what you, your real life thing to wrap the show up with because Yeah. I am gonna use this now. I'm not gonna be risk averse. Right. I am going to crowd to, surf. To to crowd surf. <laughs> but the best thing is when someone asks me, I'm gonna say yes. Because you know what's funny? Dakota's on the show because I was asking somebody who was risk averse yeah. named Bruce. If he did, he did, say no or did he say yes? No, he was kind of shivering about mm -hmm. it. But we love Bruce. We love Bruce, and we know he just needs. We read to his letters on the show before. Yeah, we love. We want him on the show. We can't wait. And I don't mean risk averse in a negative way. We're all risk averse. Yeah. <laughs> but but I was so shocked. Uh, by because Dakota was sitting next to me, she goes, "Why don't you ever ask me to be on the show?" Yes. And I went, and I went, "Holy cow!" <laughs> For some reason, I thought, "I don't know if she'd want to be on. like I don't know what." And I said, "I got excited." I said, "Would you like to be on the show?" And Dakota said, "No, I just wanted to be asked." <laughs> but actually, it no, did. I know, I, I know you did, go, but, but it was the perfect said, joke. I just said, "I really," did. and the, no, but it's true. I was like, "I really want to be asked." That's the truth. But in that moment too, when I was at that concert, what I was really saying to Matt that I was having trouble saying was like, "I want to do this right. thing." Right? Yes, done yes, totally. And, and now you've done it again. Now you're on the show. You're sharing this stuff. Yeah. And you're helping other people because a lot of people yeah. listen to this. They could relate to you. And whatever that anger was that, dude, just keep tapping into that blasted you out of that because that's you. Yeah, I just, it felt like being called like a coward, which is what it is kind mm -hmm. of. And, yeah, and of I course. just didn't want to be the, the type of person who wouldn't take any chances. Yeah. And if you read, like, there's so much stuff out there about the benefits of saying yes and how yeah. hiding yes. or, or not doing things is what keeps you stuck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's tough. It's a tough one to do, but it has been beneficial. And also, <laughs> he also has told me it's the goal in life to become basically rejection proof. Yeah. It's he's like you're always going to have a feeling about it, but the idea is to be able to just move past it. I didn't get the job, the guy didn't like me, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, and then keep doing totally. it, which is the hard part is to keep doing totally. it. Totally. And the 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 tough part I think is that the uh, the I said it last week, thoughts plus feeling equals demonstration. So how do we generate the acts? Because at that moment, you had the feeling come mm -hmm. through that I'm going to do this. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. it shot through you. And so, but we can consciously, sometimes it's just telling, don't worry. It's like we put up our sail. The wind of spirit has to come yeah. through and carry us. And we just have to bless the voices that are saying, it's tough, it's not going to happen, blah, blah, blah. Long enough for the natural inspiration to come through. Well, I'm like, I'm going to burn this for Bruce, risk averse. Yes. Burn it on this last little <laughs> shard. We want Bruce on the show and for all of us. Yes. And uh, they could, that feeling can even seem like it's not there right up into the moment. Yeah. We, but we're going to say, like, when we know we would like some, to do something, but we're going, no, 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 no. Like, because Ed and I got asked to speak short three minute shares at unity of santa barbara on christmas on christmas day and both of us were like what do we get ourselves into mm -hmm. and like i could feel the feeling of like enthusiasm was not in there but part of me knew 
because of practicing this and believing it and getting examples from friends like you, like the crowd surfing story is going to stick in our heads, is I knew once we got up there, mm -hmm. it was going to be great. Well, but, but, is, I, but all the way up into that moment, yeah. I was like, what am I going to say? Well, oh what I God. think is the it, enthusiasm within us is pushing yes, up against the resistance. Yes. And you and I were both feeling the resistance. Yes. And we convince ourselves, oh, I'm not feeling it. I don't know where. But the only reason we're even saying that is because within yes, us, the joy is knocking, man, and yeah. it's coming. Do you ever – so you know how when you're driving, sometimes it's – automatic you yes don't think about it yeah i remember one time driving home on a drive that i've taken a million times mm. and my body was like turn and some for some mm. reason my mind was like no no no, this isn't the turn and i completely end up going the wrong way had to flip back around to take yeah. the turn that i had originally thought and i remember talking to a friend of mine about this and thinking like your body knows it's just sometimes things get loud yes. and it's hard to listen to it. Yes. But like if you can really tap in, it's like you know where to go yes. or if something doesn't feel right or That's doesn't right. feel good. That's right. Well, it makes sense because they say that the subconscious and that knowing really lives within here in the heart area. Yeah. And our head is like the chatterer. Mm. And this is sometimes... And, and, and you know what? That probably that detour... Who knows what that guided you to avoid that might have been uh, yeah. something that could have harmed you? Or what did it set you up for by delaying you so who knows who you met later or bumped into or the timing? And it's never really clear until, like you mentioned earlier, until way later, like, holy cow. Yeah, that's true, too. Yeah, and our creativity comes through, like, our hips and our yeah. down, you know, like... And I think, you know, that's like a lot of the stories that I, I read when I was in college about like uh, indigenous, like Black Elk Speaks, you know, like Native American spirituality, like that. This is what used to discern like the Howley, the West, you know, like yeah. w whatever was that the Western mind wants to be so in control that these other spiritualities that surrender to the creativity, yeah. the dancing, the singing would just freak out these people that were so used to controlling everything. Wait, that's what people think about us. Which is what? You guys talk about, they're too joyful. I don't think they're really. Oh, I know, right? They're not really. Yeah, they're nice, but they're always funny. Right. Like, <laughs> we used to talk about this. Do you know this, me and my friends? What did you say? We used to like, what the f can I swear on this show? Is yeah, that a yeah, lot? Yeah. Or just like, we were just like, what is Daryl so happy about all yeah. the time? I don't understand. Right. <laughs> There's a lot of like frustration. It was just of like, course. what are you so happy about? I think yeah. it's. Well, it takes a lot of work to be this happy. 100%. 100%. But it's well worth it. It's only because of we have so much programming that tells us there's, there's nothing to be happy about. We're yeah. like, really, we're spiritually like kids in a candy store. Everything we want and desire is all around us. We just got to like break out of this preconditioned thinking that is blind to the good that is always there. That was the best compliment I ever heard. Thank you. From yes, Dakota. I oh, know. then we said, well, you're happy. Yeah. yeah that reading, that. by the way, oh, <clears throat> goes in perfectly with what you shared yes. about the yes. Yes. Let's read that, and we're going to wrap up the show in a few minutes here. I say yes to life and welcome my good. Today I say no to fear and inhibition and say yes to life. Like flipping a switch and flooding a room with light, the simple act of saying yes expands my light life an infinite supply of energy fills me quickening my vital forces i feel the power of my faith trusting at a deep level that i am lovingly supported on my path i am open and receptive to the divine flow of life love and possibilities i say yes to prosperity healing harmony and peace i live with assurance and positive expectancy when doubts and fears creep into my thinking i calmly return to the truth of my divinity and the knowledge that i am co-creating my future with god my faith moves me confidently in the direction of my dreams. I say yes to my good today and every day. Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, yes, Lord. Right. And remember the Christ at the end there is within us. Yes. There's a Christ within us that is saying, do you believe I can do this? I'm giving you these inspired ideas. Do you believe I can do then this? Say yes. And then we got, and then he always say in the, the the story in these parables, and we learned that from from Michael Schoonover, heresy in Judaism was considered reading the Bible literally was considered heresy. Not understanding the metaphysical meaning was considered heresy. It got flipped later, but the, the so 
you have to know the metaphysical meaning of that, which is that voice within us that's going, do you believe I could do this? Come on, let's yes. do this. That's I love your story about this. I'm going to use the crowd surfing because to me, what it, in my life related to the school and everything, it shows me that when I br what am I bringing into the situation? Am I bringing into, I'm like, oh, this is too much for me, or am I bringing it, I want to try something new today. Yeah. I want to try. Because that choice yes. changes the entire experience. Yeah, because the no is just going, no, no, no. Did you see what your body did, though? What's yeah. that? When you went like this. Yeah. 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 Hundred percent. I love that. I'm crowd surfing now. I'm crowd surfing <laughs> and too. I, I'm very <laughs> excited about that. Um, anything you want to say before we read the story about we we found out about you something, but we wanted we wanted to share. We wanted to see if you have anything <laughs> no, else. No. What did you in. find out? TMZ. You want to hear the story? Oh, oh. yeah. Go for it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You have a lot of. Interesting stuff on the mm -hmm. internet. No, I'm, this may or may not be true, but we like to have a story for every one of our guests. So um, apparently, mm. Dakota was always very feisty. One day, Dakota was sent home from first grade for giving another little boy a black eye. Dakota's mother was not happy. She asked Dakota, what happened? Dakota replied, little Johnny called me a nasty name. Her mother asked, didn't you count to 50 before responding like we practiced? Dakota smiled. I did. It worked. I got him good. Dakota's mother was shocked. What do you mean it worked? Dakota joyfully replied. His mom makes him count to 100. <laughs> All right. Dakota, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Oh, guess who's look, look who's prancing into the studio. Freddie Mercury. You gonna sing us out, buddy? I don't know if you can play the guitar on this. Oh no, no, you. You be Freddie Mercury. I'm Freddie Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> Traveling at the speed of light. You ready? Yeah, you ready? Yeah. I'm burning through, through the, the sky, sky. Yeah. yeah. 200 degrees, that's why they call me Mr. Fahrenheit. I'm traveling at the speed of light. I'm I want to make a supersonic man out of you. Don't, Don't stop, stop me now. I'm having, having such, such a good time. time. I'm having a ball. Don't, Don't stop me <laughs> now. If you want to have, have a good time, visit DarylNet.com. DarylNet.com. Ledford, we love you. Thanks. <laughs> Sir, baby. Thanks for being a, Thanks for being a part of Funniest Thing with Daryl and Ed. <laughs> Don't stop me now. Cause I'm having a good time. Don't stop me now. Yes, I'm having a good time. I don't wanna, wanna stop, stop at, at all. all. Yeah. yeah. Woo! Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>